What if you wanted to take several terrain height maps and perhaps some other geometry and combine them all into one height map? How would you go about doing this? And what are the things you've got to consider? Okay, right. Well, I'm going to create a terrain in the default gray material by holding the control key down. And then I'll just go into the train editor and I'll shuffle this around so I can probably get a closer view of this. Right. There are, if you click on this control here, preferred resolutions for the height map. So you can see that the default resolution is 512 pixels by 512 pixels. So that's in that direction and that direction. The other thing you have to take into account is the height aspect. And in this case, it's expressed in a 16-bit grayscale image. Now, under normal circumstances, what you see on the screen is actually 8-bit RGB. So the grayscale that you see on the screen is only an 8-bit grayscale image. And if you were to use an 8-bit grayscale image, as I'll show you, you will see visible steps in your height map because it's not high enough resolution. So if you've got 8 bits per pixel, that's a 24-bit image bitmap that is not enough for your grayscale image for your height map to give you the same level of resolution as you get by default in Bryce. So what you need is 16 bits per pixel, which is a 48-bit image RGB, but the terrain editor reads 16-bit grayscale. So at some point you've got to convert that image from RGB to grayscale. We'll come to that later. So at the moment, that's the thing to be aware of. So if we have a terrain here, and I'm now create another terrain. So we've got a couple of terrains. I'll switch the overhead view and I'll just scatter those about. I'm going to create a torus so I can show you uh, one of the drawbacks of this approach for capturing different types of geometry. And I'll create a sphere because we all know what shape a sphere is. So I'll put that there. And then I'll just move my camera around so you can see this scene. So all these things together I want to be combining into a single height map. Right, I'll just take one of these terrains for example and edit it and I'll change the fractal. I'll use uh, rounded dunes because that's nice and smooth. So I'll just see if I can get a fairly low resolution version of that and then I'll increase the height of that and I'll also increase the height of this terrain a little bit. So I'll lift that one up so there should be a sharp side there and, and with this one because at the moment they're not solid so you can see that's hollow underneath that one, that's floating. I'll make this one solid, so I'll edit this one and set it to solid. You want to use solid for terrains most of the time anyway, because there's a bit of an issue with light getting in through the back of uh, very bumpy surfaces. So if you've got uh, HDRI lighting can come in through the back, so I recommend using solid most of the time. But OK, that's a bit uh, of an aside there for what we're trying to achieve. So this little cluster of things is going to be the things I want to convert into one height map. To do that, I'm going to use the overhead view. Now, this isn't exactly an orthogonal view. Or exact orthogonal views can be achieved, but you have to use a lens systems to do that. And I want to keep this fairly simple. If you want to take a more sophisticated approach, then uh, you'll probably need to look at uh, this package here, which works along these lines, and also provides a useful converter to convert between 48-bit TIFFs to 16-bit grayscales. Uh, again, we'll come to more, more of that in a bit. But if you have that package, that's fair enough. But if you don't, you can use a paint package that has the same capability. So there's really no necessity to have that. And only if you want to get really sophisticated in your conversions do you need to start worrying about lens systems to create perfectly orthogonal cameras. As things stand, the overhead camera, which is Keyboard Shortcut 2, is positioned quite high. So if we edit the current camera, you can see that its Y value is 5,120 there, and it has a narrow field of view with these settings. So that more or less eliminates perspective on these objects because they're only a few hundred high, if, if that. So the next thing is I want to make my document set up square because that's going to match the aspect ratio of the terrain height map I'm going to generate, and I want it to set it to one of the preferred resolutions. So that's going to be 1024 by 1024, which is more or less in the same, you know, right range because these height maps that I'm copying are 512 pixels along the side. Now, 
I have a little bit of a problem here. The wireframe view, the default wireframe view in Bryce, goes out of alignment if you're not using a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which was the original default. So these are not as large as their wireframe counterparts. And I want these to fit more or less into the middle of uh, the, the scene that I'm creating. So if I can pick this plane up and position the origin of it, since it's my, my target, into the middle of the area, and then I'm going to switch display modes by using this icon here, left click, hold it down, I'll go to texture shaded, right, this will actually align when it's in this mode, and if I go onto the magnifying glass, left click, and then move the mouse left and right, I can actually scale these up so they're just fitting inside the edges, so I'll just switch it back to default wireframe, you can see how it's not aligning, but when I give it a quick render, it will line up. So the next thing to do is to think about converting these into a height map. Well we can use altitude mask for this so that makes that fairly straightforward so you can see now these are height maps but even though you can't see it Bryce is helpfully introducing noise into this image. It's doing this because it's assuming that we're viewing this through an 8-bit system, 8-bit grayscale system, 8 bits per pixel and it's simulating the better intermediate colors by 48-bit dithering. So it's taking adjacent pixels and swapping them around so that it's mixing colors with adjacent pixels. The pixels are so small on our monitors these days that you can't really identify a single pixel. However, we're going to export this image at a higher bit resolution. So we don't want Bryce to be introducing this dithering noise because it'll ruin the surface of our terrains. So these surfaces will not come out smooth. They'll have noise in them. So I'm going to turn 48-bit dithering off. That's an important step, so you can see 48-bit dithering off, altitude mask on, give this a render. And it'll only take a few seconds because it's, it's not complicated within the altitude mask. And then I go File, Export Image, select TIFF from the bottom here, select 48 bits per pixel, and call this uh, Height Map 1. So. That's got my high resolution image out and now I need to just save this file to show you the difference with 8 bits. So I'll just call this height map 1 again and it will save a bitmap image at 8 bits per pixel. So uh, the next thing to do is launch another instance of Bryce. We can go back to that other one uh, when we want to compare what we've generated. Take a little moment, OK. And I'm going to create a terrain by holding the control key down, so it's in default grey. Edit that terrain. Modify it so its resolution matches the resolution of the image that I'm going to import. So that's 1024 by 1024. Click on the picture button here. Don't use a picture tab. It doesn't work with, this, with the high resolution uh, type images we're going to load in. So get into the habit of using this one, because it does. Right, so I'm going to load in the bitmap image at first and that if you remember is the 8-bit so it looks okay in our preview but what you will find when we've loaded it in I'll give it a quick render so you can see the inside of the torus has been filled in and the scales out because that doesn't look like a sphere anymore but if we get closer you'll see where the problem now lies see these steps these are rather ugly steps on what was a smooth uh, surface so it doesn't show up so much on the rugged uh, surfaces, but on these smooth surfaces the transition has been lost and it's all got very steppy. Right, now if I try to load in the 48-bit TIFF, which is there, I run into a problem because the terrain editor is not looking for a 48-bit TIFF image, it's looking for a 16-bit grayscale image. So at this point you need to go to your paint package and convert it, or I'm going to use the little converter program that Horo has created and uh, ships with this product. So it's a bit of advertising in there for us. And uh, convert the image that way. So file, open, select my TIFF, open that, select a file name for the converted image, and uh, just let it do its little conversion process. Cool. And then I'll just check that it's uh, Windows has recognized that it's been done. Yes. I'll just minimize that, go to Picture tab, and load in the converted image. So that loads in without producing an error doesn't really look any different in the preview but when we come to the render I hope you can see now that this is all very smooth 
that uh, the top of the torus there is smooth and the sphere is smooth. There might be one or two little wrinkles along these edges and that's because the camera is not perfectly orthogonal. That uh, The difference between it uh, is, is, is small though. So if I scale the, this terrain up I can scale it up to the point where that is actually an appropriate size. So I could I could bring a torus in for example if I brought in a torus here and uh, then slipped it more or less where that was I could use that as a guide to setting the if I use one of the end views for example the scale about right because this is sort of like a reference thing I could bring this into my original scene if I really wanted to but I've just left that up there so I'm trying to get that to be more or less like a circle on that edge matching the wireframe there so if you take your time doing that you'll get everything back into scale or you can bring it back into your original scene and scale it to the objects that you have in that scene so here's our original scene if I turn off altitude mask you don't have to worry about 48 bit dithering it's not really a critical thing now if I select all those attributes I'll I'll lock them so I can't accidentally move them then I'll create a terrain in the default gray edit that increase the resolution to match go into picture bring in the converted height map and check out of there then I could uh, scale it to match the things in my scene if I was to wanting to align these up to replace them for some reason so that's that will be the idea if I can get hold of that the right thing Got a bit a bit fiddly now there we go well, you get the general idea. You don't need to see me do that. Now, the thing with this is, what you'll notice is that anything like a hollow or where it's undermined, like underneath the sphere, uh, can't be captured in the height map. The height map is more or less a jelly mold sort of shape. And you'll see also this area has been filled in, even though that terrain was floating and hollow. So it, it's not entirely a perfect conversion and you have difficulty taking the materials over because that is a lot more involved. And I've got some videos, if you look for the terrain conversions for Octane that I did from Bryce, so taking terrains from Bryce to Octane, then I do cover in quite some detail about taking the procedural textures off terrains and converting them into images that can be reapplied to terrains and that's what you'd have to do if you had different procedural textures on any of these objects is you'd have to create a different approach to texturing this object because it's now become one object so it can only have one texture applied to it really and uh, you'd have to break it up into like uh, UV mapping or image based texturing methods to uh, restore that to what you'd got in your original one but that's by the by this is mainly about capturing a height map that represents several height maps or objects in your scene for whatever reason you'd want to do that if you wanted to go further and export this say to render in another piece of software then now you've got it all in one height map you could go file and export object before you do that make sure you've set the material to the default gray as it is here because the uh, terrain exporter so if we export it we could export it as an obj format there we go is not very good when it comes to converting materials it's better to do that in a separate approach so here we can increase the resolution of the our mesh object we're producing and preview it and then export that as a single mesh with this many polygons so there are further steps that you can take should you wish to do so okay then really that's the end of the video uh, i hope you found it interesting and this will answer the question for those that were asking about uh, producing this effect of combining several height maps into one like i said it's not entirely easy and if you really want to get sophisticated about it then you need to start producing perfectly orthogonal cameras through lens systems as uh, we have in this product to capture the perfectly vertical edges of things which is why it was useful for creating the stylized render effects because you need a sheer clipping angle along the edges of objects to create the outlines that you see in this effect okay then that's the end of the video I won't bore you any longer with uh, trying to sell you on getting stylized rendering if you uh, if you want to pursue this further then you can always put some comments into the video cheers now